All right, welcome back to the channel for another music-based video. Um, today, what I want to do is go over um, my albums of the year and really kind of dwindle it down to the album of the year in, in uh, the world of melodic rock. In, in my humble opinion, which probably not too many people are, are waiting with bated breath to hear, but I just want to have some fun with this. I think this is a really good year for music. And uh, so let's just hop right to it and then uh, get to the finalists and let you know what I think. Uh, but maybe even more importantly, I'd like to hear what you think. Um, if you have a, your own personal list of albums of the year, I'd love to hear about it. There may be some albums that I missed. I mean, I don't pretend to know every single release from the year. I mean, there were hundreds. I mean, there were some online publications and magazines that literally reviewed 150 albums. And I... I can tell you right now, I haven't heard all of those. Um, and there's some that I, some groups that I kind of know peripherally that I maybe didn't buy the album or hear the whole thing or give it a fair shake. So I'd love to hear your opinions. Um, I'm always looking for, for new music. So having said that, let's jump right into it. So, you know, this year kind of had a little bit of the old, a little bit of the new and a little bit of the in-between. So there are some, you know, pretty decent albums from older school bands um, like the Scorpions and Def Leppard. Two bands that I've liked for 40, 50 years, almost. Well, maybe not 50. I don't know if I was listening to music when I was, you know, two years old and that kind of stuff. But, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I've liked both of those bands since, you know, late 70s, early 80s. Um, both albums were solid. Um... You know, maybe not as hard rocking consistently as some of the stuff I'm used to hearing from them, um, which isn't always a bad thing. Um, but those albums maybe lacked a little bit of the consistency, or maybe they just suffered in comparison to obviously some of their historical releases that were, you know, masterpiece albums back in the day. Um, kind of the same thing with the Giant album. Even though some of the original band members are still participating, it's definitely a different focus when Dan Huff's not there. I mean, the voice is different. Um, he's not really involved. I think he played guitar in one track, but really had very little to do um, with the album. Um, so the songwriting is, is from, you know, different players. And while it's a you know pretty decent, solid album in its own right, to me it's not at the same level of of what Giant was back in the 90s and when they first came out, essentially. Uh, Last of the Runaways, Time to Burn, those albums are, I mean, classic melodic rock albums. So solid, I wouldn't say spectacular. Um, but one of the old guard that did come out was something new this year that I do think is spectacular was Jolyn Turner, Belly of the Beast. This album um, is incredible. Um, it's heavy, even heavy for Jolyn Turner, who's done some heavy stuff with some heavier bands. It's amazing to me that he hadn't released an album in, in 15 years, a solo album. He's done other projects. It always seems like he's doing something. But this is the first solo effort in like 15 years. So very heavy, it was by design, he wanted to shift gears. Um, you can hear it right away with the first song, Belly of the Beast, the title track is basically kind of metal. To me, it's one of the songs of the year. It's, it's one of the many reasons why I really enjoyed the harder stuff this year and more kind of middle of the road traditionally, but this is such a great album. So it made my top three, um, no doubt. There's a couple bands that I've I've now known for 10, 20 years um, that also put out some, some decent stuff this year. So one of them is 10. We all know 10 and Gary Hughes. Here Be Monsters was the album that came out. Pretty good album. Um, don't think it had as many of the standout tracks as maybe some of the older 10 albums did. I do think 10 sometimes gets into this situation where some of their songs run together a little bit. Um, so it was it was a good album, maybe even a great album, but not 
not in my top two or three. I wouldn't say it was um, a classic 10 album. And same thing with Find Me, Lightning in a Bottle. Um, Find Me is a little different. I mean, they're, they're more of a studio effort through Frontiers Records. They have one of the best singers out there, Robbie LeBlanc, who's just, I mean, I put him right up there with, you know, any famous melodic rock singer you can think of. It's a shame that he's not better known. I think he would have been huge had he hit the right band earlier in life. <clears throat> this album is a very good album. Um, it just doesn't maybe have as many of the standout tracks as some of the other Find Me albums or all of the previous Find Me albums did. But it's very consistent. There's not really a bad song on it. It's just maybe less of the outstanding masterpiece songs. Um, I'm kind of moving right along. There's two other groups that are new groups, but they have members that have been around for a while. So one of them, changing pace here a little bit, was Generation Radio. So former members of Journey, I mean, Jason Sheff from Chicago, very pleasant album. I would kind of put it more in the adult contemporary category, what we used to call adult contemporary, West Coast, AOR, a little lighter. Um, very enjoyable album. Was kind of wanting something, not even necessarily like hard, but something a little harder, mixed in a little bit more with some of the lighter tunes. Um, so a very solid effort. Doesn't make my top three, but very good album. And another band that has actually put out two albums in the last, I guess, maybe like three years now, or give or take. Maybe Black Swan. They came out with a new album called Generation Mind. Um, this album makes my top three. This album is so damn good, solid, consistent. Even though they're a new band, I mean, you have Robin McCauley. We all know Robin McCauley. He's done other projects. He's done solo stuff. Michael Schechner Group. Jeff Pilson from Dawkin, and more recently A Foreigner, Red Beach. I mean, you've got some guys that have been around the block here. So old school guys putting out a new album that is just awesome. The title track, uh, Generation Mind, is, you know in the first five or six seconds just how great that song is. Um, some of the other tracks are really like Killer on the Loose. It's got, you know, just... Awesome guitar riffs, um, great vocals. Just this album has it all. There's great solos throughout. Um, I played this album so much this year. Um, so it definitely makes my top three. And then a band that's really the newest of all of these that I've fallen in love with just over the last, you know, kind of year or so. They've already put out two albums and they just put out a, a mini EP with four cover tunes. And that's this band out of Sweden, Fans of the Dark. And they came out with their second album called Suburbia. And I've done reviews of both of those albums. You know, they're unique in that they have a lot of 80s kind of horror or suspense themes to their music. Um, Suburbia came out a few months ago, and every song, there's only eight songs, but if you know Fans of the Dark, you know that eight songs really equates to about 12, because many of their songs have different layers and components to them. Um, the different sections could have been songs in their, in their own right. So it's eight songs, yes, but um, really more, more music than that. So kind of came down to Joel and Turner, Black Swan, Fans of the Dark. Then I, I just dwindled it down to two, and that was these two. Um, Black Swan and Fans of the Dark. This was really hard for me. Depending on what second I was thinking about this, it went back and forth in my mind. It was that close. It's, they could be one in 1A. There's really, I mean, both albums you play. These are albums you play through from beginning to end, and you look forward to every single track. And really kind of thinking about it and then putting it away for a while and then thinking about it again by the smallest of margins. Because again, these to me, these are tens out of tens. 
These are perfect albums. I had to give it to Fans of the Dark and Suburbia. If, <clears throat> every song is just incredible. <coughs> Excuse me. Night of the Living Dead, Pirates of Maine. <clears throat> you know, Sick, Sick, Sick is such a fun song. Fright Night, same kind of thing. They even have a song called Fans of the Dark. Um, you know, there's the same kind of themes here. Some of these songs I think should have been written for Stranger Things. Um, just what a what a great album with great songwriting. Freddie Allen is their drummer, but he pretty much writes most of their stuff, which is a little unique in some of these bands. You know, the guitarist and lead singer, and they co-write whatever. <clears throat> Um, and then Alex Falk, their very unique lead singer who is just so versatile, who just adds such a punch and flavor to these songs, <clears throat> above and beyond just the masterpieces that they are. <clears throat> so in a, in a nail biter, it goes to Fans of the Dark, Suburbia. If you haven't heard that album and their first album, you have to pick those up if you like anything within this realm of melodic rock. And I would say the same thing for the Black Swan album, <clears throat> their first album, which came out a couple years ago. Um, also pretty darn near perfect. I would give the edge to Generation Mind, the second album. I also understand they're gonna be making a third album. Very much looking forward to that. And the way Fans of the Dark is going, I'm sure they're gonna make a third album within the next year. Um, so we might be talking about these two again for 2023. And if that's the case, we'll be in good shape. So let me know what you think. Let me know what your albums of the year were. Very curious to, um, hear other people's opinions and stay tuned, uh, because shortly I will make another video. We're talking about song of the year, which could very well, I mean, some of the candidates for that could very well come from some of these albums I just talked about. So until then, take care.